All right, makeup geeks, it is time for another Pretty Smart. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Marlena, and every Sunday I'm doing this series where I'm combining makeup with books that I'm reading. I've made it a personal goal this year to read a new book every single week, and they're really intense topics. And today's topic is all about minimalism, which if you guys know me and you've been following me for years, you know that I am the least minimalist person ever. And so that's why I picked up this book. It doesn't just talk about how to get rid of your crap and all of that. Why is it getting in the way? It actually talks about living a meaningful life. So that is our topic for today is, is my crap getting in the way of having a meaningful life? I'm gonna put these hair things in. I'm gonna look real sexy right now so I can get my hair out of the way. This book is by Josh and Ryan, and these guys um, are best friends. They grew up together and they lived not an easy life. They were raised by single parents and those parents had substance addictions of various kinds and it left them financially unstable. So after they got out of high school, they really wanted to focus on getting their finances. They thought if I make X amount of money, then we'll be happy, our lives will be easier. So that's what they did, is they worked their way up the corporate ladder until they were in their 20, late 20s, and they were making six-figure money, they had dream houses, luxury cars, all of that, but what ended up happening is they got into debt, their health started going bad, they were exhausted because they were working 70 to 80 hours a week, and this whole time they thought that the key to happiness was to make a lot of money, get a dream house, and it ended up not being that way for them. So they kind of had a wake up call in their late 20s that they were miserable, everything was kind of going wrong for them. And they started doing research on minimalism. They found a couple other people that were really big into that and they decided to make some severe changes. So in the time of just two years, they decided they were gonna get a grip on their lives. Um, they focused on getting themselves out of debt because even though they were making really great money, they said that they were actually in six-figure debt. So they took two years and completely changed their lifestyle to be more minimalistic, just to simply get themselves back on track, get out of debt and all that. So after two years, they ended up quitting their corporate job and just spent their time focusing on minimalism and how it can bring more fulfillment and more meaning into your life. So that's what their book is about. It's not really focused on how to cut things out of your life and all of that because that's what I kind of thought the book would be about. But as I started reading, it was more focused on what brings a meaning to your life versus what you have to take out of it because you can't have room for things that are meaningful because there's only so much time, so much money, so much resources you have. If you have all this crap getting in the way of having what's really meaningful to you, then you can't really focus on that because all the stuff is just there. So Josh and Ryan are saying that to have a meaningful life, you want to focus on these five values health, relationships, passion, growth, and contribution. And that's pretty much what most of the book is about. It's not really about cutting out stuff, even though obviously they talk about it and share their story. It's more about focusing on those five values and how you can have more time and resources to focus on that if you get rid of all the other stuff. The first step that they said that you need to do is identify your anchors. There's two categories of anchors. There's your major ones and your minor ones. So major ones are going to be your mortgage, your car payments, your uh, key relationships, the people you spend the most time with in your life. Your minor ones are gonna be like your cable bills, all the clutter in your house, unused clothes that you haven't worn, things like that. So they say you have to identify what are your top anchors that are weighing you down to have a meaningful life. So for example, with them, they decided they were in debt and they wanted to get out of that. So they cut their expenses in every way possible so they could focus on getting all of those down so that when it came time to, if they wanted to quit their jobs, which they ended up doing, taking something else that maybe didn't pay as much, they were financially able to do that because they got their lives to such a simple place that they didn't have all this stuff they had to worry about paying for. They say in the book that the point of minimalism is to have freedom in life, not to feel like you're losing things, but you're having more freedom to do what you want. I wanna pause for a second and read this quote because it was so good. Minimalism is a tool to eliminate life's excess, focus on the essentials, and find happiness, fulfillment, and freedom. 
It makes sense. But how can you do that if you're spending all this time, money, and effort on all this crap? Value number one that they talk about in the book is health. Sorry, I'm trying to get my little glue on here. I use hair glue to get my brows up. Health is the number one value that they talk about because there's five values that we had mentioned and health is the first one. And they give this really great example in the book. So imagine that you won the lottery and you buy your dream house, your dream car, you pay off all your debt, you never have to work a day in your life and you're living your life on the beach. The next morning you wake up and you have this excruciating pain in your stomach. You race to the doctor to see what's wrong and they tell you you have this terminal illness and that you only have six months left to live. And oh, and by the way, after today, you're not even gonna be able to get up out of the bed. They use this illustration just as a point that if you have all this stuff, it doesn't really matter because you're not even gonna be able to enjoy it if your health hasn't been a priority for you. Now they do say that health obviously looks different for everyone. We can't control some of the things that we all have, but their point is that is that you can focus on being the healthiest that you can be. One statement I really liked from the book that they said is that health is not a destination, it is a journey. And I can definitely attestify, attestify, testify to that. As you guys have known, you followed me on my weight loss journey. I lost a bunch of weight. I gained some. I've struggled with weight my whole life. So that really hit home for me because when I was losing weight and I stopped focusing on I have to get to this certain number on the scale or I have to be this size. When I let all that go and I just focused on what am I going to do today to be healthy? What am I going to do today to be kind to my body? And I noticed once I focused on that, you all, is when my weight was a lot easier because I needed that mental piece almost to get the weight off. I know I'm like on a little bit of soapbox right now, but I really like that statement of it being a journey and not a destination. So they do say in the book that, you know, they're not going to give exact examples of what you need to do to be healthy other than I do recommend, obviously, we need to eat, be eating vegetables and stuff. But as far as the diet plan goes, what works for one person is not going to work for the other. Like I tried, I, I in my weight loss struggle my whole life, I've tried every diet out there. The cabbage soup diet, the lemonade with cayenne pepper diet, the all fruit diet, the all vegetable diet, the vegan diet, the all protein diet, the keto diet. I mean, I've tried them all. But obviously we all know that we can't just be pegging out on Cheetos and Oreos. Like we know that that is not good. So when it comes to your health, what is it that you can do that you can get rid of, be more minimalistic in your lifestyle? And one thing that I've personally been doing is I eat the same thing every day. I'll mix it up a bit by different vegetables that I try in different dressings. So like every night for dinner, we have protein bowls and it's usually quinoa, chicken, a bunch of like grilled or fire roasted vegetables. It's so good, you guys. I'll do the recipes on my Instagram if you want to check it out. But I eat the same thing almost every day and I haven't got bored with it yet, but it takes the guesswork out of it. It simplifies things. So it takes less time to cook it. I don't have to think about it. It takes the brain part about, so I don't have to worry about that willpower. My life is so much easier now with that. So that is one part of minimalism when it comes to health and eating that has been whoo lifesaver. <laughs> the third category of the third value that they talk about is passion. Now this is not just like, it's like passion in life. So they talk about how people, especially when it comes to work, they label their jobs basically in three different ways. You think of it as it's just a job, it's a career, or it's a mission. And they go into all of this stuff about, you know, obviously we have to make money to live, so that's just not even an option. But how can you cut out all this stuff in your life so that you can focus on having a job that doesn't feel like just a job, it's not just a career, even though careers are amazing too, but it's an actual mission. What Josh and Ryan said that they did is when they were transitioning from their corporate job to what their passion was, is they did it part-time. So basically as they were still working their corporate job, they started their minimalist.com blog, they started writing articles, they started reading and researching. That's kind of the same thing I did with Makeup Geek. For those of you who don't know, before I started my company, which is my actual passion, I was a music teacher. And of course, from a financial standpoint, you can't just Quit your job and be like, oh, I'm gonna follow my passion. Follow your dreams, yes, yes. You have to still pay the bills. So one good method is to just do both 
um, for a little while. Yes, it is very hard. It's very time consuming. But if it's something you're really passionate about, it doesn't feel like work. And you never really get exhausted doing it because you're just so in love with what you're doing. Josh and Ryan also say in this chapter that there are four anchors that are preventing you from following your passion. And those are identity, how you view, view yourself. Maybe you don't want to change your job because, you know, you've always been this at this job and that's who you are. But they say that you are so much more than your job. Sorry, it's really hard for me to try to talk and do liquid liner. You are so much more than your job. That can't be your sole identity because if anything ever happens to that job, you feel hopeless and lost. You can't have your whole identity just focused on what you do for a living. So that part is definitely an anchor. Status, you know, maybe you're having, you're worried about what everyone thinks about you, that you have to have this you know, certain job title because what are people going to think? Like, who gives a rat's ass what people think? Do what makes you happy, not whatever one else expects you to do. The other one is certainty. Now, obviously, that's a harder one because you need financial security and that's what gives you certainty. If you're in a job that you absolutely hate, yes, it brings financial certainty, but is it going to be more painful for you to stay and feel that you're going to be stuck at that job for the rest of your life or to figure out a solution on how to change and actually do what you're really passionate about? So it's kind of a price of certainty versus unhappiness and doing this forever. And then the last one is money, obviously. And that's where they said that the um, key is with minimalism is trying to be financially sound by just cutting out all the crap that you really don't need and it buys you freedom to be able to do what you really love because you're in a financially better situation um, just from cutting out a lot of stuff. But this always looks crazy before I put the lashes on. I'm like, okay, lashes will pull it together. Give me a minute. They said there's five steps that you can focus on to become, I guess, financially free or not have to worry about the acre of money. It is budgeting, investing, getting debt free, minimizing what you're spending your money on and then contributing, which is giving away stuff or selling things that you don't need. That's a contribute part. So they give a lot of tips in the book. I'm not going to go through it all because it would be a lot, but it's a really, really good chapter. So this chapter for me was really crucial because I never really learned budgeting growing up because we never really had money. And then when I finally was able to get money later on in life, I was really stupid with it. Honestly, I'm kicking myself so hard, you guys, because I was just dumb with that. It bought all this stuff, person and shoes and clothes and things that I look back now I'm like damn you know what I could have done with all that money instead of buying all this crap so this chapter was really eye-opening for me and they give some great tips as far as um, how to be financially free so obviously they start with creating a written monthly budget and then they said to divide your expenses into three categories need want and like and then just do a hard survey of everything that you're spending money on is this an absolute necessity is it something i want or is it just something i like and then they said to save up start your safety net and so you're supposed to put away a certain amount each month whatever you can spare put it into a savings account and this you'll save up for a rainy day if something happens or as you're transitioning to your passion job that maybe you're not making as much money as you need you have a safety net that you You've built up in place. So definitely if you guys end up getting this book, read that chapter. I think that was probably my favorite chapter in this whole book just because it had a lot of great tips in there. I'm not going to go through them all just because it was a lot. And it would be a really long video. But the fourth one that they have is growth. Now they said that if you are not growing, you are dying. So they said growth is obviously really important for having a meaningful life and growth can happen in several different ways. That can happen by taking classes, reading books, learning new things that you want to always grow and improve and, and try and learn new things because that's what's going to help you have more richness and depth to your life versus kind of this like flatline superficial way to living. Part of this growth that they talk about is change, about making change in your life, especially with big decisions. They said that change happens in two ways it's either in giant leaps with things such as like getting out of a relationship quitting your job selling your house buying a car those are obviously big 
leaps that you're going to do, but the most effective change on your day-to-day -day life are going to be in baby steps. And this is where they said that you have to focus on making good habits. Kind of goes back to the book that we talked about last week, you guys, about having daily habits. They mentioned that in this book too, is if you want your life to change, it takes daily habits and consistency doing the same thing every day to eventually see the goal of that. Like for example, they said with them and their financial debt of them taking two years to get out of it, it took every day of cutting back on things, saving money, making changes on a day-to-day -day basis, and over time is how they got rid of their massive debt that they acquired. The key to real growth, honestly, is just that consistency, which that makes sense to you. I tried to tell myself that every time that I get on that dang treadmill, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to see weight loss. I'm not going to be like this size by tomorrow, but if I keep doing this every day, then over time, I'm going to be in a healthier position and, and be at my target goal. That's what I try to tell myself. <laughs> then the last value that they talk about is contribution. And this is what are you going to do to contribute to others, whether that be spending time at a shelter, making food, or maybe it's teaching classes or whatever that looks like for you. They said that without contribution in your life, that's what adds more richness is because you may be able to have all these things and have a meaningful life, but unless you're contributing to others, that's what really adds that super rich depth and just makes you overall happy. Like think about it, how many times have you done a kind thing for someone else and it brings so much joy to your life? You're like, dang, why didn't I do this more often? Like this feels so good knowing that I'm doing some good things for other people and that in return, like, they pass it on to the next person. It's like this cycle, but in a really good way. That I thought was a really interesting step too, because I don't really think about that when you're thinking of like self-improvement. It's all about you, 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 but sometimes it's like, no, it's about other people too. Whew, those lashes are on fleek. I'm gonna take these out before it starts crimping my hair, which it probably already did, but whatever. This quote was my favorite in this chapter too. It says, giving is living. Without it, your life will feel self-serving, which definitely makes sense. I don't know, it takes the focus off yourself and it's like, okay, instead of me always worrying about what am I doing for me, me, me all the time, worry about doing things for others, it's just really rewarding and fulfilling. We're only just focusing on ourselves and really the world doesn't become a better place. I know that feels very soapbox-ish, but you guys know what I mean. I definitely really liked this book. I liked the whole idea of minimalism. I really think I've been doing that even on just a day-to-day -day basis. Like my makeup collection is streamlined. My clothes are so much more like you guys, if you could seriously see my closet, what it was a couple years ago, what it is now, it's not even recognizable. And it's so crazy. It's like, I don't even miss all that stuff that it's like, it's still sitting in storage now, which I'm going to try to start selling it and giving it away. But I don't even miss the stuff. That's what's so crazy. I was like, how did I compile all this crap? It just feels like I'm spending so much time and effort worrying about it. It's so much more freeing knowing that I only have things and people and stuff in my life that I really love and really, really makes me happy. So that's my two cents anyways. Sorry, I'm going to finish up my highlighter here. I forgot to add that. Ooh la la, ooh la la. I definitely think you guys should check out this book. It's an easy read. It's really good. It has a lot of information. And check out their site too, uh, theminimalist.com. I'm not promoting or pitching it in any way. I just think they have really great articles on there that I think you guys would really, really like. Kind of, I'm not sure about this like, you know, kind of cut crease crazy type of thing, but I wanted to try it anyways because it's different, but... There you go. That is our pretty smart for this week. Check out last week's video where we talked about the six minute diary and about is happiness a choice. Next week, we're going to talk about 13 things that mentally strong people don't do. Thanks you guys so much for watching and subscribing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments what type of books that you guys want me to share with you and what type of topics you guys want to talk about. So thanks you guys. Have a good one.